We have got a monster in the Caribbean right now. This is Hurricane Barrel continuing to move to the west. We're going to talk about that today. Plus, we've got severe weather here across the lower 48. The potential for some tornadoes, too, from Missouri into parts of Iowa. Let's start with Barrel. We're going to move quick through this because there are some changes I want to talk about and I want to make sure you're aware of. Right now, moving to the west, northwest at about 22 miles per hour. The maximum sustained winds, 165. That makes it a strong Category 5 hurricane. Continued to uh, move to the west, northwest. That's the forecast. And maintaining that major hurricane status as it nears Jamaica, where there are hurricane warnings up. That storm expected to continue to move west, kind of a northwest jog. Unfortunately, it looks like the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico will be impacted. So the forecast cone includes places like Cancun all the way down to Tulum even into Belize we may see, see impacts here and again this cone is the center of circulation so if your circulation comes ashore here you should have a wide area that will be impacted now let's talk about the Gulf Coast I think if you're really anywhere in these areas you need to pay attention I don't know if it's as far east as Alabama but maybe the problem with these storms as far as reorganizing once they move across land they encounter that friction they lose their their source of energy so to speak these storms are fueled by thunderstorms that just continue to convectively develop over and over and it's almost like a feedback loop and once they lose that ocean connection those storms don't have any source to pull from anymore down below them that land is there so because the storms lose their strength you start to lose some of that inflow into those thunderstorms and that's what fuels a hurricane okay it also encounters the friction of the land the trees the terrain so the wind speeds start to slow down some but the water's still warm here. It may not be as warm as it was earlier, but still pretty warm across the Gulf. And look at the forecast track a little further to the north. I was talking about that because we're going to have a trough that swings here through the central U.S. as we move later into the week. And that may pull barrel north. I did a video on that a couple of days ago, and it looks like the models are catching on to that, bringing the center of circulation, at least the mean center, once we get way out into the weekend into Texas. Does it stay a a hurricane does it become a hurricane does it drop to tropical storm status regardless you're going to have a huge rainmaker potentially possibly moving into texas the good news is too out to the east of that that area of disturbed weather that had a pretty good chance of developing now looking a little less likely so that's some good news let's take a look at the surface pressures here's where we are right now strong high pressure here across the northeast really keeping barrel to the south and driving winds in like this along the east coast we have sort of that northeast fetch so if you're at the beaches today pretty much anywhere along the southeast coast kind of kind of cool ish i guess compared to where it would be but that high starts to retreat now we start to see lower pressures here across north america at the surface does that allow barrel to move north well some of the models are picking up on that potential especially as our trough on the upper levels moves through Let's talk about the severe weather, though. That's something, though, that you want to pay attention to over the next couple of days, especially along the Gulf Coast. Strong storms from Iowa down into Missouri this afternoon. Some of them, again, could contain some tornadoes in these areas. We've got a strong upper-level jet streak moving through. That's a core of strong winds aloft. Those will be moving through this afternoon. Go down a little bit lower. Winds coming in out of the more the, from the west-southwest that will create some wind shear that change of wind direction with height hence that's why you're seeing that tornado risk highest here tomorrow everything kind of shifts off to the south and east so now we're looking at the strongest threat from central ohio back through indiana kentucky even back into missouri again now we're looking at southern missouri maybe even arkansas and then big storms could get going here on the east side of the rockies tomorrow some of those could contain some tornadoes a pretty decent risk here from parts of south dakota down into colorado kansas and nebraska uh, into the afternoon uh, on your now we're into wednesday so very active here all right let's go ahead and take a look at the future radar through the day today we've got these storms going here again across iowa they'll really start to fire up by the afternoon and evening hours some of them could also contain some damaging winds some hail certainly possible and these storms back into kansas could get strong too we lose the heating tonight but again tomorrow the threat shifts off to the east and southeast a little bit kind of quiet here across the southeast uh, places that are in need of rain south carolina north carolina parts of virginia we've been talking about that too there was some rain in the areas but i'm telling you what the corn crop is really suffering in some of these areas we could definitely use some rain and there may be some relief finally on the way However, uh, it's going to come at the risk of some severe storms, I think, especially further north and west here of these, of these areas. As we head into Wednesday, though, the storms across parts of Indiana and Illinois will start to fire up into the afternoon. Also, Ohio, Missouri, those will drop to the south as our front moves south. 
And then here comes our rain chances now into the mid-Atlantic sometime, say, by Wednesday into Thursday. Across the west, we've got our monsoon flow kind of coming in like this. That's going to bring some more showers and thunderstorms into parts of New Mexico. Maybe as far uh, west as eastern Arizona, it's going to have a hard time, though, really moving much further west than that. Uh, and then as we head into Thursday and Friday, everything kind of shifting off to the east as far as our severe threat. A little cooler, though, than what we've seen lately here across the east uh, today, but we will start to warm up heading into tomorrow. Hot across, again, Texas, Oklahoma. We've been talking about that for days, and the heat is starting to build across the west, too. We'll really see that heat move even into the Pacific Northwest by the end of the week. Now, precipitation-wise for the rest of the week, if you're wondering, we're going to move through this really quickly because I think this is always good to show. You get a kind of an idea where the rain is. Now, by Thursday and Friday, the biggest chance for rain starts to push back here across uh, the Midwest into parts of the Plains, even to parts of the Great Lakes. As our next system moves through, that could bring another round of severe weather. Here's where barrel will likely be sometime as we move towards Saturday. Again, all interest here from Mexico all the way along the Gulf Coast. Need to pay attention to this as we head into the weekend. The track is still uncertain here. Maybe some much-needed rain potentially across the Carolinas as we head towards Saturday and Sunday. Again, it looks widespread, but at this point, we'll take anything we can get, right? We really need that rain here. Now, once we head into next week, what happens with barrel? Regardless, I think some of that moisture will be picked up and brought north. That will be something to keep an eye on. I'll be watching it. I hope uh, you'll come back. If you've not subscribed, I hope you will. And, and again, I hope you have a great day wherever you are. I'll see you next time.